if you're squaring yourself away, making sure everything's in order, you've got the right people in your corner who have the right legal authority, you know, you can make the, the process of, of losing capacity, which is difficult, very, very challenging, a little bit easier. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome back to the Last Paycheck Podcast. We're your hosts, Archie Hoxton and Rob Hoxton. And today we have a topic for you that is maybe one that's a little drearier, but it's really, really important. Um, And that is putting your affairs in order, preparing for losing mental capacity. It's something that in our business we witness a lot. And so a, a big part of our job is making sure that people are ready for that. And by, by, by that, you don't mean witnessing your, your business partner losing compa- capacity, right? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> like on a not. daily basis. No, of course not. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, this is definitely a, a very grown up topic. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we're, we have to be as financial advisors, financial planners, we have to be really careful and, and make sure that our clients have taken the important steps. And then we have to be ever vigilant um, in working with the clients to be able to sort of pick out some of the telltale signs that they may be slipping. Um, not yeah. that we're qualified to do that any more than anyone else is. Right. But for clients who we've known for 20, 30 years, you know, you can start to see, you know, changes in them for right. sure. Maybe they say something that's out of character or they don't see in themselves or that kind of thing. And so it's, it's important, like you said, to be vigilant. Um, and if you, have, if you don't have someone in your life who's, you know, been helping you with your finances for many years, um, it's important to take, take steps for yourself uh, and make sure that before those symptoms, whether it's, you know, losing your memory, um, disorientation, those kinds of things, if you're taking steps before that happens, you can really protect yourself yeah. and those around you. And importantly, if you're listening to this or watching watching us today, you, you may not be um, 95 years old and having some of these issues, but your parents may be. Right. Right. And we live in a world now where fam- nuclear families are spread out over great distances. And so we may not see our parents and grandparents as often as, as we might like. And so picking up on those cues can be, be really uh, more difficult. Right. right. So... Right. And if, if you do have aging parents, it's important, you know, we did a, recently we did an episode on, on scams. It's important to keep in touch and check in on them because uh, those people as they're aging, maybe they're losing some mental capacity. Uh, they they're, tend to be more vulnerable to, you know, predators who would try to take advantage of them and, and steal their money or, you know, steal their identity and that kind of thing. So as, um, as the, um, as the children or grandchildren of aging uh, loved ones, uh, you can be sure to spend time with them and understand what's going on in their lives. Uh, I know that the older generation sometimes is hesitant to be quite as open about finances uh, and about what's going on in their life. Maybe it's because they don't want to trouble their kids or grandkids with whatever it is they may be going through. Maybe they're worried about you know, having to relinquish, you know, part of their freedom. Right. I, I know, I, I have a friend who, who, you know, it's kind of sad, but jokes at the same time, who talks about every time his grandmother takes her car out, and she's in her early 90s, um, it seems like it comes back with a new dent. Uh, it's almost like it has this rash that keeps growing. And, and he's struggling with at what point do they have to have this conversation about, look, we're worried that, you know, you can bang your car up all you want, Grandma, but we're worried about your welfare and the welfare of other people who you might encounter on the road or on a sidewalk or in a parking lot. And so these are really difficult conversations to have, but that's why I call them really grown. It's a really grown up topic, but 
you have to have to have them. And, and, and I don't think you have to feel alone either, right? So there are other people who might interact with an aging family member. I know that in our practice, uh, we make a point of having this conversation with our older clients, one in which we say, look, if, if we think that you're slipping, who in your family or who that is, that is close to you should we reach out to? Or if we feel that you've perhaps been a victim of a scam, who would you like for us to talk to? So we get a, a trusted contact. We have a form, write down the trusted contact's name, phone number, email. That way we can reach out to them if we need to. Right. And that's important. And, and whether you've got someone like a financial advisor in your life or not, you know, it's important to know if something happened, who are those people in my life? And do others who I trust with, you know, professionals who I trust with important responsibilities in my life, do they know who those people are? And do your, have your loved ones who are older, have they thought about that? Uh, have you discussed that with them? Um, if, you're the, if you're the older member of the family and you're watching this or listening to it, um, do the rest of your family a favor and, and think about this in advance. Yeah. Don't make them have to start, initiate, or begin this difficult conversation. Go to the loved ones or loved one that you believe can best uh, address your needs and say, look, these are the plans that I've made. Um, I want you to know my lawyer, my accountant, my financial advisor, because uh, I want to make the aging process less stressful for myself, but I also want to make it less stressful for you. So you can, there's a lot that you can do if you're getting to a point in life where you think that you may need assistance, you need to reach out to that family member or trusted professional. And, and make those arrangements. Be proactive. Yeah. Um, it's a huge, this kind of planning is a huge gift to the next generation, right? It is. And it, because dealing with medical decisions, um, financial decisions, and, and that, that someone who you trust might have to make for you, setting them up with expectations, with the right trusted people who you've worked with in your life, um, making sure they know how to access any kind of documents that are critical to, you know, naming you as, a, say, an executor, um, or more specifically to this topic, you know, your power of attorney. That's going to make the process more easy because it's already an emotionally difficult experience. Like you said, Rob, you may be talking about the loss of your sense of independence or, you know, if it's your aging loved one, their sense of independence um, and freedom, and that's an emotional thing. So having to walk them through that or, or kind of guide them, um, that's hard enough as it is. Um, not having any idea what that person, who, who they wanted to make these decisions for them in the first place, so having to decide that for them is difficult. So part of it is having these conversations, making sure that your loved ones if you're younger, um, that you've had the conversation with your aging parents or grandparents. Um, if you're the aging parent or grandparent, make sure that you've had the conversation with someone who is capable that you trust in your family to, to assist. But then there's a lot of sort of documentation that needs to happen, right? You need to have certain documents because, you know, your bank is not going to trust your son or your daughter uh, with your money unless they have evidence that you've entrusted them with it. Right. Your doctor or, or you know, caregiver is not going to trust you unless there is a specific document. Uh, and even then, if you have that document, they may not honor it. So let's talk about that a little bit. What are some of those documents, Archie? Yeah, so you've got several categories. And if, if you, you take the broad term power of attorney, right, this is, a power of attorney, that's where you're granting someone the ability to make key decisions for you. Um, like if I made you my power of attorney, you could go to my bank and make changes to my account. You could pay bills for me, right? 
if, could I could I take your money out of the account? Potentially, yes. Yeah. So this yeah. is a serious decision, of course. Right. Yeah, there, and this, this gets into the weeds, but there are varying levels of power of attorney, right? There's, there's limited, there's general, uh, and, and, and some of them, a limited power of attorney might say, okay, you can pay my bills for me, but you can't pull money out and put it in your bank account. Yeah. Right? It, or, or you can't withdraw money in general. It's, it's, so that's so, something yeah, for another, so, another right, day. And, but, and we should jump in and say that we are not attorneys. We do not practice law. This is the realm of and domain of a licensed uh, jurist doctor. So make sure make sure you're getting with um, a qualified attorney to help you with this. Right. That's a that's a decision for your for your attorney to help you with. So, um, however, then there's another kind. Right. You've got your healthcare power of attorney, and this is a power of attorney where you're you're enabling someone that you trust to make decisions related to your healthcare. Right. So some of those decisions might be like, do you want heroics or l like lots of intervention if you're close to the end of life? Do you want to be hooked up to machines or, or you know, uh, feeding tubes and things like this? So you're able to have control of your end of life decisions if you plan ahead, right? And even then, sometimes I, you know, I know of a story where where a son had a medical power of attorney, his father was dying, he had, he had given it to the hospital, walked out to get something to drink, came back, and the attending physician had inserted a breathing or a feeding tube uh, when it was clearly not in the patient's uh, wishes as documented by a power of attorney. So this doesn't always work, but you should have this sort of thing just in case. Right. Because you want someone who you can trust. If you're, you, you don't have mental capacity and you're not really there and conscious, you want someone you can trust who can tell the physician, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is, what, this is what they would want. Another one is the living will. Right. And they usually they kind of go it goes hand in hand with your healthcare power of attorney, right? Your power of attorney is where you're appointing someone to make your decisions. Your living will is where you're saying, Hey, these are the kinds of decisions I would want you to make. Yeah, sometimes called advanced medical directives, right? You're right. saying right now what you want to happen in the future. Right. So that's where you might say, Hey, I want a reasonable amount of life saving care. I don't want to be you know, some people say, I, I don't really want to be on life support forever, you know, if there's no hope of me coming back. Um, I don't want that kind of, that kind of, that kind of health care. So you're taking the burden of that decision off of your, your health care power of attorney, who would have to make the final decision on that. Or your children. I mean, children. Don't, don't put your kids in a position where they have to decide to pull the plug or not put the plug in to begin with, right? I mean, you know, I, I'm going to pull some pranks on you when I, when I pass away, Archie, but I'm not going to pull that one. Okay. Okay. I Thank mean, there's going to be a, like me. something that pops up out of my casket and scares you, but it's not going to be whether or not um, you have to unplug me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, because I mean, imagine, I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing to think about, but if you put yourself in that position, what would it be like to make that decision for a loved one when you actually never had the conversation? They never wrote it out in a, a living will or advanced medical directive. You have to just assume that you know what they would want. So, you know, that's, that's another really, really important one. So um, these, these documents are really, really critical to making sure that, you know, the people who you are going to be relying on if you lose capacity know what to do and have the power to do it. Um, I'd, I'd say an honorable mention in this would be long-term care insurance. We'll do an episode on this because it's such a big can of worms, but this is a way to make sure that you're never going to be uh, a financial burden, right? If you need... Or even more than that. So, I mean, I, we have, your mother and I have long-term care insurance because I don't want either you or... Um, your sister 
to have to change my diapers or give me a bath. I mean, that would just, I would much rather be fully clothed when you come to visit uh, and not have to worry about having you attend to those very personal activities. And, right. and then the cool thing about long-term care insurance, if you get it and you can afford to have it, it's so expensive, but uh, is that most of those policies will provide for in-home care, right? right? So maybe somebody that comes around and fixes you lunch and, you know, checks in on you or um, from that and, and getting to be much more, you know. Having a nurse come yeah. by. Yeah, so you, you have to have lost a couple of your activities of daily living for that to cover. But at any rate, that's another real gift that you can provide uh, to your children is to, is to have, you know, have planned for Maybe you still have your mental faculties, but you can't care for yourself physically at that point. Right. So, right. so families, if you love each other, uh, have these conversations. I know it's not a comfortable conversation to have, and, and don't do it, you know, over the dinner table, you know, when you've got uh, Christmas or New Year's or Fourth of July, but find a time to sit down and have this conversation. You'll, someday somebody in your family will be glad you did. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that just about covers it for today. So we hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe, leave us a comment, share it with your family and friends, and we'll see you next time. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.